I'm talking to you now, Eric. This is your razor. You sent it to me to play around with it. I'm not giving it back until you make some gumbo scented soap, all right? I'm keeping that razor until you make that soap. If you want it, you're gonna have to come get it, all right? What is going on, guys? Sean here with another video, and today is an interesting one. It is August 15th. Um, to everybody who reached out and asked about how I was doing in the storm, Ernesto, we're doing well. Just got power back like, um, I don't know, an hour ago. All right, anyways, today's video, we're testing out two different razors. Um, we're testing out this Cajun cutter and we're testing out this gold dollar. Let's start with the gold dollar. Both were honed, one stone, cotical. This one was finished on a cotical that um, is a good finisher, it's really hard. Um, it has a hard time when I have slurry um, to get that uh, grayish slurry. So this is my good my good um, cotical for finishing. So I said, I'm, uh, this is a gold dollar, so I need to give it as much advantages as I have. So the cheap razor gets the good finisher and the expensive razor, the Cajun cutter, gets the more aggressive cortical. Um, this one like uh, is a fast cutter. Uh, so obviously um, the way I finished on both of them varies, but I just wanna see um, the results I get. Um, although this was, um, finished on a one stone home, this pre previously was, um, convex, so the cutting could be better on this one, because I, I found with cuticles, convexing them, it, it does make that cut, that keenness, a, a little higher, so we'll see. All right, I have my soap ready on my lather. Today I am using, I hope I'm saying this right. Foret de Pins from uh, the Cajun Blade, my good friend Eric. He's the one who has been guiding me through the cortical. Um, so today we're using this. And as a pre-shave, we are gonna be using uh, Cremo uh, Sandalwood scent. So um, anyways, I'll, I'll get started. I still don't have uh, a lot of water parts of the island don't have enough power, so they're not generating as much um, water for everyone. And I live pretty high up in the mountain, so I have yet to receive all of my um, water and it's not coming out hot either. So I wish it did because obviously a hot water, on your face with a hot towel will make those whiskers I don't know I feel like it opens up the pores so it makes the cut a little bit better when shaving with a straight razor or shaving at all I feel like the prep has a lot to do with the outcome of the shave I really love this sandalwood scent on the cremo but the lather is just horrible for straight razor guys but it is pretty um, slick, so it has that going for it. I have about, I don't know, four or five days of growth. No, three days of growth. Um, I usually don't wait this long, but um, like I said in my previous videos, I'm having good success with cuticles. So I'm making a lot of experiments, um, sticking to what works for me, but I'm also trying out different cuticles. So, all right. Shout out to the us usual suspects. How Leon says it. Leon Longhole Tanker, such a great guy. Go check him out. You literally won't ever get bored with his commentary. And he says a lot of things that I 
quite quite frankly think think that are true so he just has the most beautiful razor that I've seen the uh, the 14 er wonderful razor Martin test shaves he has the stash going on and I think he looks younger with it and uh, he's got to be careful because uh, that thing's a babe magnet. I just watched his video when I got power back. Eric, the Cajun Blade. I think he's uh, recovering from COVID. So wishing him a speedy recovery. And uh, go watch his latest Codical video. I think it's really good. He'll probably leave a comment, so that's where you can find him. If not, the Cajun Blade. Bama Boy Shaving. Check him out. Check out Devin Jackson. He uh, helped me a lot when I was starting in this straight razor journey. Really good guy. Check out Bill M. He's the convex guy. Um, you've probably seen him in... Uh, Forums getting kicked out. <laughs> Anyways, really good guy. Helped me out a lot. Um, Greg Gallant, such a good guy too. Uh, I don't think he's put up a video after he started the uh, August challenge, but I really miss his videos. Um, who am I missing? Dapper Shaves is always a classic. He's always good to watch. All right, we have the... Good finisher on the convex stone. There we go. You guys saw the growth. I might have to do this again with another razor because I feel like the... I've never gotten... Uh, an edge, well, yeah, I have. I have gotten convex edges from other people, but the way I honed and using convex edges, I really feel like it's um, very different. You'll always end up with a good edge with a convex, I feel like, or I've always ended up with a good edge. Heavy stubble, and this is performing really well, but this is my um, slower cotty. It's like a finishing cotty. So I've never had problems with that one. Nice long strokes. And now we're going to move on to the faster cutting cotty. And this one, I had to um, finish on it differently. Um, on my finishing cotty, obviously the early work takes longer because it doesn't want to remove quite as fast. And then on this one, which is my really fast cotical, I had to, the early work is done pretty, pretty well because it's a fast cotty. But the finishing, you have to be very meticulous. So let's see how we did. And then that's the reason why I chose this razor. I chose a good razor for a um, cortical that would give me problems finishing, but I also was very meticulous. I finished on oil on this cortical. And uh, let's see how we did. So I might just finish on oil on all my cotties now. That felt really good, but. Obviously, this was a good shaver. 
but this is a gold dollar so this is my testing out razor and I'm not gonna finish a shave with a gold dollar if I don't have to So this was a fast cutter when I got to the, I started with really heavy slurry and um, dial a cut, dial a cut. But when I got to the end, <clears throat> it, it was creating too much slurry for a polishing stage. So I went to the sink. Actually before that, I put soap, water, 100 laps on water only. After every 20 laps, I would spray it with water. with the soap there and after I did my 100 laps I went to the sink I did 100 more laps not under running water after every 10 laps I cleaned the stone and I cleaned the razor 10 more laps and that was quick it was like put it under the water put the razor under there and it's clean. So you might not see the garnets, but they might be there. After I did 80 laps, cleaning the stone every 10 laps, I cleaned it every five laps for the remaining 20 laps. And after that, I took some mineral oil and I did um, 25 laps on mineral oil. And we did a one stone hone that way with the fast cutter. Now with the finisher, um, I just did the 100 laps on, on soapy water, and that was that, you know, it's, it's a, it's, I can tell it's a uh, harder stone. So, my approach can't be the same. Um, yeah, it's a natural, but my approach can't be the same when going into that one. No way. Both edges, I would say, are above Keenness 10K, the way they remove, not the way it feels on my skin, but the way it removes the whiskers, the efficiency, the, the ease. And don't, I'm not saying it's a 10K. I'm saying how it performed compared to my synthetics. So it's not how it feels on my skin. It's more uh, the ease of it cutting. How easy it is cutting my hair. All right. This is, I'm talking to you now, Eric. This is your razor. You sent it to me to play around with it. I'm not giving it back until you make some gumbo scented soap, all right? So I'm keeping that razor until you make that soap. If you want it, you're gonna have to come get it, all right? We're going against the grain here. So 
So I'm holding your razor hostage until then. I'll give it back once you make that soap. Ah. At this point, there's no reason Go against the grain here. It is my belief that um, and I think Martin has this belief as well. I think we've talked about it before. I don't know um, if you have this one or not, but um, small razor like, like a 4.8 or a 5.8 um, they always tug a little bit, even if you have a good sharpening. You can look at it under the mi microscope and see how it, the edge is developing, but I always find that it'll some, somehow tug, um, with bigger razors like this 8.8 eight razor, um, it, it feels like the, the, the higher the razor, the bigger the razor is, the, the easier is of the ease of cut. Oil. That's what that's what this needed. Honing on oil. Great Razor by S.K. Collins. Um, you did a great job for Eric on this razor. He'll get it back once he makes that gumbo scented soap. In the meantime, he's staying over here in Puerto Rico. All right, what now? Aftershave Splash. Aqua Velva. It, no, it was actually four days of growth now that I think about it, because I remember why I left the growth. Oh, man. Cortical edge, it doesn't get any better when it comes to the ugh, to the sensitivity on the skin. It'll always, I don't know, not always, I guess, but I really like the um, the edges it produces for my skin. And what was I saying? Oh yeah, I left my um, growth a little bit higher because my my skin was getting a little bit dry shaving every day. Um, and even after shaving after every two days or 48 hours, it, it was still a little bit dry. So that definitely um, helped my skin a lot. Really good shave. Um, I know I'm putting out a lot of cortical content this last like couple months, but I'm I'm really digging them, so I'm diving in deep. And I recently acquired a vintage cortical on eBay. I bid on it. I won it. Um, so I'm interested to see. Probably gonna have to clean it up a bit, but um, I don't know. I got it for a really good price, and it's a vintage, so. Or it looks like a vintage. That's it. Thanks for being here. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anyone. Uh, to the usual suspects. Yeah. Have a good one.